got to deal with what's in your mind. What's keeping you from reaching your full potential. We got to deal with it. You understand? We got to. All right. So what questions do you have about this Bible that we can answer for you? Me and my mom a long time ago, we suffered in an abusive. She suffered in an abusive relationship. Say it again. My mom suffered in an abusive relationship when I was young. Okay. Still kind of do. Um, Still kind of do it right now? Yeah. Okay. And that's something that you've seen yeah. growing up, right? And I did believe in God at once because that's what my mom told me. But as I got older, I started to drift away because I started to think, where is God? Why isn't he helping me? All right. All right. Now, mom. All right. I'm going to deal with you. All right. I'm going to deal with you. Are you still with this man? No. All right. How long has it been? A year now. All right. All praises to the Most High. How long were you with him? 17 years. Too long. How old are you? 15. How old? 15. 15. So his whole life. Yes. His whole life he saw that. All right. Now watch this. Did you know God when you met that man? Absolutely. Say it again. Yes. You say yes. All right. Now you know what the problem is in our community is we think that we know God. All right. But I'm going to show you how you know God. All right. I'm going to show you. Give me First John chapter 2. I want verse 3. I'm going to show you how you know God. Because oftentimes we think that we're in a good relationship with God. And we're in good standings with him. But we're not. All right? And we've never met him. All right? You know who we met? We met this man right here. Who's that? Who's that? Who's this right here, Mom? Show me the, give me the light. Somebody got a light? Who's this right here? Who's this? Who's that? Christ. Right. That's, that's why. That's why. That's why we have never met God. You understand? You didn't know God your whole life. Your mother was deceived, Julius. She thought she knew God, but she didn't. All right? But it's okay, because many of us out here were deceived too. We had to be taught the correct knowledge according to the Bible. We had to be taught that. You understand what I'm saying? All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in the Bible why your mother didn't know God. She thought she knew God, but she didn't. Read what you got. The book of 1 John, chapter 2 and verse 3. Yeah. Hereby we do know that we know him. Did you hear what the Bible said? This is how we know that we know God. This is how I know that I know God. This is how you know that you know God. This is how your mom knows that she knows God. Bring Come on. If we keep his commandments. We do what? If we keep his commandments. We do what? If we keep his commandments. Now mom, all right, didn't grow up keeping God's commandments. How do I know that? Because this guy right here is not Jesus. And this guy right here does not teach God's commandments. But your mother thinks that this is Jesus. That's what she thinks. You understand? She was deceived. She thought she was doing the right thing. Like many of us. You understand? That's why she stayed with this man for so long. You understand? But she didn't know this Bible. Because the white man, our oppressors, you understand? The so-called white man, he didn't teach us correctly in slavery. So generation after generation after generation, you know what we've been passing down? Lies that are not correct. All right? Now, mom, I'm going to show you a law. All right. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. I'm going to show you just simple laws, basic laws. All right. To show you that we have been taught incorrectly. We were not taught right according to the Bible. And I'm going to do this because your son needs to understand what's going on. He's going to be confused. All right. About God. If he doesn't know the truth. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 4. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Mom? The woman shall not. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God says the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What things do women wear? What things do you wear that pertain to men? Basically like the pants. There you go. You understand? How long have you been wearing pants? For, too long. For a long time. For 17 years probably. You understand what I'm saying? Julius, you see that? All right, so what I'm trying to show you is that your mother was taught incorrectly. She thought she knew God, right? Mom, you thought you knew God, right? Were you keeping his commandments? No, sir. No, she was not. You understand? So she has to be born again, just like you, just like all of us. We all had to be born again. Right. You understand? It's not her fault, right? It's not her fault, right? From this day forward, it will be her fault. You understand? Because she's being taught correctly now. Right. Now there's no excuses for that. So your mother's going to stop 
wearing the pants. She's going to stop dressing like a man. Because now she's learning this Bible all over again. Just like we all had to do. All right? Your mother was not keeping God's commandments. If she was keeping God's commandments, God would have blessed her with a godly man. I'm going to show you why. All right? Give me Sirach chapter 26. Listen to the Bible. The Bible has all the answers to our problems. All right? The Bible is going to prove to you, all right, that you're not crazy. The Bible is going to show you that. All right? Read what you got. The book of Sirach chapter 26 and verse 23. A wicked woman. A what? A wicked woman. I was a wicked man at one point in time. I had to repent from that. You understand? Know As a wicked man, you know what I received from God? I received wicked things. Wait, you think God's going to bless a wicked man with wicked, with, with righteous possessions? No. You understand? I'm not good enough for that. I'm going to defile it. Right? God's going to keep me away from his preserve. You understand? He's going to give me what I am. You understand? And they will be a match made in heaven for each other. As a wicked woman, guess what you will receive? A wicked man. But I'm going to let the Bible show you. Come on. A wicked woman. Julius. The Bible says a wicked woman. Come on is given as a portion to a wicked man. A wicked woman is given as a portion to who? A wicked man. The Bible gives you solutions when you have problems in your marriage. How to fix them. Right? But if you're not keeping God's laws, you're not going to know how to apply these things that you read. You understand? That's, your, that's the problem. You understand? That's the problem. So it's not, it's not the Bible. Alright? It's the lack of applying it to your life. Why your life is why your why your mother's life was in shambles at one point. You understand? Why you why you've been affected by that your whole life. You understand? It's not her fault why that happened. All right? Or it was her fault, but now moving forward she's going to fix it. You understand? She's going to fix that. All right? If she knew better, she would have did better, but she ain't no better. She knows better now. All right? She's going to take that take the pants off. She's going to learn the Bible so she can apply it. Teach her children. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Where you at? All right, drop that. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, start at verse 5. I think that's what I want. All right, this is the solution that the Bible provides for a husband and a wife. That's righteous. All right, I'm not talking about a wicked man and a wicked woman together. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For with that all men were even as myself. But every man have this proper gift of God. Read. One after this matter and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows. It is a good, excuse me, it is good for them if they abide even as I am. Read verse 3. I think I missed it. Read verse 3. Let the husband render to the wife due benevolence, and, the, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So the Bible says in a marriage, right, the woman's body is not her own, it's her, it's her husband's. You understand what I'm saying? Sexually, right? So when a man wants to have sex with a woman, the Bible says that that woman got to have sex with that man. You following me? Right? And the same thing for, because sometimes a woman get home, all right, maybe you don't know this, but I'm going to teach you because you're growing into a man. A woman get home. Right? She's been in the world all day. She's married. She has a husband. She may want to have sex with that man. The man can't say no. Because if, if, he, do, if he does, that's going to put an evil spirit on the woman. The woman may want to go have sex with another man. When she's supposed to be able to have sex with her husband whenever she wants. You understand? It's the same way for the man. When a man gets home, sometimes he worked a long day. He may want to have sex with his wife. You understand? And she's supposed to be willing to do that at all times. Right. All right? Probably had done it already. If she was a good woman. You understand? She would have made sure that that man was in the spirit before he left home. All right? But these are things that we weren't taught. All right? So that's not abuse. That's not abuse. Because God says that the woman belongs to the man. The man belongs to the woman. They need not to defraud one another. Do you understand that? All right? Come on. Let, excuse me. The wife have not power over her own body. But the husband. And likewise also. The husband have not power over his own body. But the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. So the only time you're supposed to defraud sex from each other is when you agree to pray and fast. When you consent with each other for a time. Now jump down where it says uh, 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 re reconcile. You know what I'm talking about? Verse 10. Verse 10. And unto the, excuse me, and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. So when a woman and a righteous man, a righteous woman and a righteous man are married, 
You understand? God says that that woman, all right, is not to leave her husband. She's supposed to stay with him, all right? But there's an exception there, all right? Read that again. And unto the married, I command ye, I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, if she depart, why would a woman depart from her husband? Adultery, what else? Very good. Say it again. Adultery. Uh, what else? Why would a woman depart? Um, if Why would a woman leave her husband to go somewhere else? Either I, either I committed adultery or he committed adultery. What, what else would a, why else would a woman depart? Um, no, let's say that you're righteous. All right, let's say you're righteous. Why would a woman depart from her husband? Yeah. Say it again. Died. Who? I'm death. Death? No, I'm saying your husband's still living, right? Why would you leave your husband to go be somewhere else? I'm talking separation. Why would a woman do that? Abuse. You understand? Abuse. That's why you would leave your husband. Read it again. But, excuse me, and I said I'm married. I command yet, not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Read, 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 read it again from the top. Verse 10. Verse 10. Oh, verse and unto the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Read. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. So the, woman, the Bible says if a woman depart because her husband's abusing her, let her remain unmarried. That means she can't have another man. You understand? Even if the man commits adultery on your, on your, on your, with your mother. You understand? The Bible says the woman can depart for a little season. But it says let her do what? Let her be reconciled. No, no, no. Let her remain oh. unmarried. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. You say she can't go have sex with nobody else. She can't get married to nobody else. If, if the man commits a I'm talking about a righteous relationship. What I'm trying to show you is that your, your father, your mother, the example you had before you and your household, it wasn't righteous. It wasn't according to this. The Bible has laws to deal with everything. Everything that goes on in our community, we have laws to govern it. All right? If there was abuse, true abuse, I'm, I wasn't in the household. Right? Women today, right? I'm not talking about you. You might be righteous, right? But women today will complain and say they're being abused by a man because he wants his dinner cooked at 5 o'clock every day. They say that's abuse. You understand? Some women will say that. But true abuse, the Bible gives a solution for that. All right? The Bible, if the man is beating on his woman, that's not in the Bible. That woman should leave that man for a time. But the Bible says she should remain how? Unmarried. She should remain unmarried. Meaning she can't go get a divorce and get married to somebody else. She needs to separate for her safety. And then what? Come on. Or be reconciled. To and, th and then be what? Or be reconciled. She needs to be reconciled. All right? Back to who? To her husband. To who? Her husband. So once that man repents, he gets himself together. The Bible says that that woman and that man is supposed to come back together and be reconciled so there can be peace in the household. That's what's supposed to happen. There needs to be peace in the household. The only way that that's going to happen is if you have a man and a woman, all right, that's willing to submit themselves to God's law. If you have a man and a woman that's in a household and they're not willing to submit to this, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be chaos and out. There's nothing you can do about that. You understand? There will be chaos. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Start at verse 24. I'm going to show you what chaos looks like. These are the things that was going on in your household. All right? That's why there was chaos. And I'm sorry that you were a victim of that. You understand? But guess what? You got to overcome it. You got you to gotta, you gotta find a way out of it. You understand? You got to fight it. You can't let it define who you are for the rest of your life. You can't do that. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 24. They kept neither lives. They did what? They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. We didn't keep marriages undefiled. You know the blacks and Hispanics today? We defile our marriages. Our marriages are defiled. And you know what we produce? Defiled children. That's what we do. The Bible's telling you how you defile your marriage. Listen, come on. But either one slew another treacherously or grieved him by adultery. A, a, a man and a woman, they commit adultery. In was it adultery in your relationship, ma'am? You. Uh, was there adultery from you or him? Was it adultery? Um, 
Yes. Yes, there was adultery. You hear what the Bible says? It's going to defile the marriage. Come on. So that the excuse me. So that there reign in all men without exception. Blood. So this is what's going to come from a defiled marriage. Come on. Manslaughter. Manslaughter. Come on. Theft. Theft. Come on. And dissimulation. All this stuff sound familiar, ma'am? Come on. Corruption. Corruption. Come on. Unfaithfulness. Un was it unfaithfulness in the marriage? Come on. Tumult. Perjury. Read. Disquieting of good men. What's the Bible say? Disquieting of good men. You're supposed to be a good man. The Bible says that you'll be disquieted from your parents. You understand? Disquieting of good men. Meaning what? Now you mad. Now you ready to fight somebody. You don't know whose side to take. Or you maybe just go in your corner and close the door and cry. This is things that we did as children. That's going to disquiet a good man. You're supposed to be a good man, but that marriage defiled you. Come on. Forgiveness of good terms. Defiling of souls. What does the Bible say? Defiling of souls. Your soul was defiled. All right, their soul was defiled. Come on. Changing of kind. What does the Bible say? Changing of kind. You know those types of marriages? They produce little children that say, you know what? Maybe I never, ever, ever want to get married. Or maybe I want to go into the homosexual lifestyle. Jeez. Maybe a woman just ain't for me. Because I saw what a man and a woman look like, and that shit is hell. I'm going to stay far away from that. And I'm going to see, my, I'm going to try my chances with a man. A man and a man. The Bible says that disorder in a marriage will make you feel like that. You understand? That's what the Bible says, Mom. You hear that? These are the things that we have to repent from. All right? You ain't never known Jesus Christ. You knew a white man named Caesar Borgia. All right? Pope Alexander V, his son, who was a homosexual himself. You understand? That's who you know. You don't know nobody else but him, whose boyfriend was Leonardo da Vinci. You've been worshiping him as Jesus Christ. That's the devil. You've been worshiping the devil, and you said, I wonder why my marriage is defiled. It's the fact because you've been worshiping the devil your whole life. There was idolatry in your marriage. There was idolatry in your mother's marriage. All right? You know what idolatry is, according to the Bible? Idol idolatry is breaking one of God's commandments. You understand? You cannot worship any idols. Give me Exodus chapter 20. Your mother was worshiping an idol. All right? That idol is this man that you see right here. That man allowed all of those things we just read about. That man taught those things to men, and those men taught your mother the wrong way. You understand? And you're a child. You're a product of that. You're a product of that. Do you understand? All right? That's why you feel like you feel. But you weren't worshiping the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. All right? You didn't even know him. You didn't know his commandments. You didn't know none of that. You understand? But guess what? Both of y'all are learning this right now, and you can repent, and you can keep God's commandments the right way. Right. Read what you got. Right. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right. Come on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Any what? Any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Now this is not a likeness of God when you read the Bible. Jesus the Christ does not look like this. Alright? But this idol has the name Jesus Christ. That's an idol. That's a false God. Alright? Jesus Christ ain't look nothing like that. Alright? Jesus Christ didn't teach nothing that he teaches. Alright? Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, yes, right. you understand, taught a man to fear God and to keep his commandments. Right. All right? That man don't teach that. That's why that marriage was defiled. That's why you witnessed abuse growing up. You understand? That's why you witnessed a marriage full of chaos. All right? That's why you witnessed that. So what can cleanse you? What can make you whole? Give me Proverbs. Give me Psalms chapter 19. 119, verse 9. I think that's what I want. Yes, Psalms chapter 119, all right? Give me that, and I'm going to show you how you get yourself together, all right? I'm going to show you how to learn how to fix your situation. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 9. Well, with thought, shall a young man cleanse his way? How shall a young man cleanse his ways? You want to clean? You're a young man. You're 15, 16, right? You got to cleanse your ways before it's too late. Come on. By taking heed. By doing what? By taking heed. You remember we read earlier, this is how you know you know God? What was the answer? So the line. What was the answer? This is how you know you know God. What was the answer? Mom, what was the answer? This is how you know you know God. I'm lost. You lost? I'm sorry. You don't remember? How do you know that you know God? What's the evidence of it? 
It's keeping the commandments. Right. That's how you know you know God. All right? So listen to what's going to cleanse you from all that evil. All right? You with me, Julius? You sure? All right, read what you got. What with thought shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Take heed according to whose word? God's word. That's how you fix your situation. That's how you cleanse your mind. That's how you repent, all right, from that abusive relationship that you witness. Don't perpetuate it and don't fear God's commandments because the people you were following did not know God. They were not keeping God's commandments. You understand? Don't let that be your excuse, all right, to go out here and live your life any way that you want to. You understand? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 